demons are our crew. And a demon uh, is uh, part of your ship. And what we're putting together is the demon of riches. So the demon is both the ship itself and the uh, and the the thing that you serve, and it, it affects your uh, your your style. So we got to figure out like supply, and it's paid it's paid with tribute, right? Um, and this is the demon of riches. Okay, so let's let's add this in at the top here. Um, the demon of riches. By any means necessary, a demon of riches seeks out wealth. It demands that it be attired in glittering shields and bannered in finery and will reward its crew with a life of high luxury if it's tended to appropriately. Uh, the demon of riches begins with uh, stuff, tribute, in its supply. Uh, it is tier zero with stronghold and zero rep. You're a brand new demon. Um... So, is your demon, uh, let's see, an initial reputation and vessel, right? So, this is the, is your demon ambitious, brutal, cruel, ineffable, mercenary, sleazy, wild, or zealous, right? Uh, and then, you earn XP when you bolster your demon's reputation, so you will have to act these ways, right? This is, this is the thing. Uh, no, the Navigatrix and the demon have no relationship. Nope. See again, the navigatrix. You're you're uh, you're conflating some of the other. The priest and the demon will be connected, right? But uh, the navigatrix simply uh, uses the uses the demon to move them around. Um, the priest serves the demon directly. The priest is the one that's like the engineer, right? Like down there, like rubbing their face on the engine, etc. And, uh, yeah, and so uh, initial reputation and vessel, you're going to choose that. And then talk about the shape and form of your ship. Uh, it's probably either small and impressive or large and run down. Go ahead and get weird. Uh, you begin at tier zero, so you're nobody. So demonic corruption. Let's just, let's just go through all the notes that I have so far and see what we got. So we talked about how... You choose what your demon's portfolio is focused on. This will be small at first, but bound by your influence. So this is like your neighborhood. You're in competition with other demons. The demons fight each other and you serve them. Um, and then the universe is divided up uh, between all the greater demonic powers and your allied. Your, your ship is basically some crappy imp. Uh, the GM will tell you what other demonic entities exist nearby. You decide how to deal with them. You pay them off. Uh or you, uh, you you fight them, right? So it's like pay them off, give them tribute in exchange for giving you room to work, pay them as a show to respect, gain status, or keep your keep your loyalty and take minus one status with that faction. So this is the the setup initially. This will go into that setup doc. Um, okay, and then your demon will give you different operation types. You choose one as your preference. When you prepare to execute an operation of your preferred type within your corruption, you get plus one die to any gather information. This is all standard blade stuff. Um, when you acquire additional corruption and resources, your demon has more control and influence over human thought and behavior. You describe detail your new dogma and rituals. So when you uh, gain corruption, you become more uh, powerful in certain, uh, or more influential in certain areas, and you get to decide, okay, in the universe, this is becoming more true. So you're basically using your demon to influence the setting, right? And this is why we have that map. Uh, let's see. No, you don't need you don't need a priest on the ship. No, priests priests are just like weird obsessives. You can run a ship without a priest. Uh, you need a navigatrix to like move around. Um, corruption would be reputation. Yeah, I think I think that's how that goes. And then heat would be um, opposition from other demons. Uh, or by the narc, right? Opposition from the narc. I guess actually, heat heat is only the blue coats, right? Heat is only the cops. So that's the pigmen coming after you. Yeah. Um, so as we as we talked about, your demonic corruption is like your neighborhood where you you are gaining tier uh, in, and you as a group will choose what are we fighting for, um, and then uh, yeah, and then what. Uh, 
what does that say? And this this affects this affects the game, right? This affects what your campaign setting is about. And as you become more powerful, you get to say more about punishment or sleep or travel or whatever, right? So this is a group you would want to pick. And then you start to add on more like, okay, we've seized control over the dogmatic processes of hygiene in the universe, right? No one is allowed to cut their hair but must bathe three times a day in milk and uh, you may only allow one of your fingernails to grow. All other fingernails must be removed. So we control hygiene. Let's expand out into something nearby. Let's find another neighborhood and expand out into shame, right? Let's expand out into uh indulgence right like this idea of like slowly like expanding but you will pick at the beginning um yeah the demon's name is coke nail um the you you pick at the beginning where you want to start which is interesting because if you pick something like love it'll be a completely different game than if you pick something like science right this is a, a really uh a really aggressive way to put a, st a literal stake in the figurative ground uh, as to where your uh, where your demon uh, has influence, so that's that's super important. You're building you're building up your god by stealing other other pantheons, and it'll be like two gods of hy two demons of hygiene fighting, right? One that believes that that washing is illegal and and should never be done, that we serve in filth. And then another is that we we must be clean all the time and we must bathe in a, a thin uh, bath of acid every day to burn away uh, all of our... And these guys are all like pale and they look like they've been in an overchlorinated pool. And then the servants of the other guys are all like dirty hippies and they and they fight to, to serve their demons. Uh, and then whoever wins influences or corrupts uh, that thing, that aspect of human relationships and human life. Yeah, right, Umbra, it'll be a flow chart of messy connections of, of domains. Let me make a note that I gotta I gotta do that. Um so like uh corruption represented in the book as a messy network of ideological interconnections with varying importance by how basic or significant each node is to humanity in general. Okay, perfect. Cool. Um, yeah, the, the X here is tribute. We're calling it tribute. That's the, that's the thing. So uh, what is it in? Let me look at the crew sheet. Tribute is coin. That's our analogy. Uh, you were two zero, two coin in its coffers. Okay, so two two tribute. Your demon begins with two. Two tribute. That's good. That's resolved. Okay, there we go. It's tier zero with stronghold zero rep. All right, you choose your reputation of vessel, um, and then you establish your demonic corruption. So this is going to be uh, your demon seeks to corrupt all aspects of human life, eventually controlling every moment of every sentient thing in the universe. Demons are greedy, but operate through their specific type. A demon of riches might control sex, uh, love, and uh, let's pick another one. Uh, sex, love, and let's pick one totally off soon. Government. There we go but we'll do so through a lens of commerce, hoarding, and uh, desire, and commercial desire, right? Um, cool, so if, if, for example, your demon, in the ultimate end game, if your demon seized control of the entire universe, 
everything would be filtered through a lens of riches, right? All things, everything on this list. And this would never happen in a real game because this is like you're the king of the entire campaign setting. But like aesthetics, family, marriage, death, justice, it's all based on money because a demon of riches controls it. Uh, yeah, this demon does all things to gather money. Um, this is the uh, omni omni riches demon. Yeah. Um, okay. So you, uh, your demon, your demon is not alone. It is merely one dark stain on the bleak tapestry of the universe. So the universe's subconscious dogmatosphere. It is in competition, direct and indirect, with other demons who seek to corrupt humanity as well. Humanity with their own particular flavor of filth. This means you're in competition with those other demons crew. Those other demons crew. Cruz? Cruz is... Cru Cruz. Terry Cruz. Okay. Um, the universe is divided... Right now, the universe is the domain of the greater demonic powers of which your demon seeks... Which your demon seeks to... Supplant uh, and remove and supersede. Let's get into that alliteration. Uh, it's just a shitty imp for now. And the ladder to divine ascension, infernal ascension, <laughs> is long. Um, the GM will tell you what other demonic entities nearby, then you decide how to deal with them. Uh, and then these are your three options, right? Like in, in Blades, uh, this is this part, establishing your hunting grounds. Um, so let's, let's actually talk about the corruption thing now. So you establish your... Choose a single aspect of humanity to... Okay. This is the aspect uh, on page whatever from this is where your demon's corruption begins. Okay. Um, uh, so, okay, this is where your demon's corruption in the universe will begin. Uh, work as a group and choose this carefully as it will theme the uh, theme, the theme, it'll add themes, it will flavor the theme of your game. Um, I'm gonna add a comment, add a sidebar here about choosing sensitive carefully working together to make sure that this tale of heavy metal demonic corruption isn't hurting anyone in real life some of the aspects are could be potentially uh triggering or upsetting for folks talk it out right like talk to your group because if you're like I want I want this game I want our demon uh, to try to corrupt uh, and and control gender norms in the universe. For some groups, that could be super fun. You could be like, awesome, we're gonna become the 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 just the queerest group in the universe, and we're gonna make we're gonna ch bend the universe to have better ideas about how gender works. But someone in your group might also be like, 
cool, I want to play a demon of straightness that wants to annihilate gender and make only one gender in the universe. And, only, and that might be like, you got to talk to your players. All of these things are fundamental aspects of humanity and uh, affect us all uh, in, in varyingly deep ways. So I want to, I want to add a sidebar about like how to pick this carefully and how to talk about doing this because consent is totally metal and making a safe environment in which we, uh, we can be, we can be totally metal. Yeah, the pigmen. The pigmen only have one gender. Uh, they are they are pig. Uh, they don't. Yeah, gender is irrelevant to them. They have just the one. Um, and I don't think they have sex either. I think they reproduce some other weird way. Yeah. Um, suborn is such a good word. I learned it from the the coin uh, the coin games. Um, it's bribing or inducing someone to uh, illegal acts. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have known that until uh, until I uh, until I read uh, until I played those games. Yeah. Cool. Huh? It's a good word. Uh, all right. So uh, here's what you do. Your options are uh, pay them tribute. Uh, this is a bulleted list, right? Uh, pay them tribute. And that is give them one tribute uh, or I guess pay them off. Okay, I'm going to change the way we phrase this, though. Kiss their ass. Give them one tribute, I guess, in exchange for giving you room to work. Um, and then, what else we got? Uh, pay them to tribute as a show of respect and gain plus one status. Okay. Uh, As a sign of deference, take plus one status. Is that how that works? I want this to functionally operate the same. Plus one status with them. Yep. Okay. So this is like you're a lesser demon and you serve, like you serve the imp and your imp is like, you, you're, you're feeding tribute to a, a larger demon. Uh, okay. And then... Um, Let's see. The last one was keep your money and take minus one status with that faction. Okay. Flip them the bird. Keep your tribute. And take minus one status with that demon. Here we go. Okay. All right. Impin ain't easy. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Uh, okay. So, uh, your demon will give you different operation types. How is that set out in here? Oh, uh, that's right. So, I got to figure these out. What do demon of riches uh, have? Where is that listed? I guess we'll just list it here. Um, the demon of riches... Im Impin ain't easy is a good pun, but it's it's off brand for this. It's, we don't make rap references in this game. I love rap music, and I would love to throw it in here, but this is a more focused uh, pop cultural pop cultural cesspool than than maybe you might be used to from me. Uh, okay, so the Demon of Riches uh, provides. Let's see, prefers operations involving. What are my what are my four things? What do what do these guys want? Accident, disappearance, murder, or ransom? Uh, robbery, con job. How do you get money? How do you get like how do you get shit tons of money? Uh, robbery, con jobs, um, bribery, extortion. Let's see. Yeah, swindling is like a con job. Let's call that, let's change that to swindle. Swindling, extortion, or, hmm, demon of riches. Robbery, swindling, extortion, or some kind of, yeah, like some kind of bigger, like tax evasion, but it's got to be a business. Oh, my God, just, fuck, legitimate, legitimate business. Yeah, Jeevesy, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yep, yeah. Robbery, swindling, extortion, or business. These are all terrible crimes. Terrible demonic crimes. <laughs> Selling t-shirts. 
merchandise. Um, yeah, or business. Uh, okay. Um, and then as a result, uh, choose one as your preference. Uh, is empowered by operations, jobs, there you go, involving robbery, swindling, extortion, or business. Choose one as your preference. When you prepare to execute a job of your preferred type within your corruption, you get plus one die to any gather and a free additional downtime. Perfect. Oh, that's so good. So, like, <laughs> no, business, I mean, business is, like, selling albums and selling merch. Like, yeah, you can you can make money being metal yeah okay um so for example you've chosen your corruption uh say we are a demon of oh that's so good okay so if you're the demon of riches check this out let's do a let's do like a theoretical one uh you're a demon of riches you're uh you're choosing say you choose you want to go whole whole hog on this one you choose sex as your corruption right you choose sex as your corruption um, and you, uh, you want to do a job involving business. You go to a planet, you set up a sacred brothel and, uh, yeah, no, I love it. That's so good. Oh, that's so good. I love it. Fucking cool. Okay. And then you get plus one die to gather information, free additional downtime, and you get to like make up the planet. I think probably I'm going to need travel to be, I keep thinking about travel stuff. Uh, travel is probably a role that lets the PCs make up stuff about the place they're going or choose from a list or adjust a table, right? Like a random table of places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah, that's sick. Okay, cool. Yeah, separate from like it's it's not you don't like succeed or fail at it. It's like a thing that's part of like making up the planet when you go there. Yeah, like it doesn't exist until we go there. You're right. Picking facts, that kind of thing. Um, places don't exist until the first time we need them to. Then we do the thing. Right. Planet creating or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll figure that out later. So that's obviously like second phase. We need to figure out travel. Um, okay, when you acquire additional corruption and resources, your demon has more control and influence over human thought and behavior. Um, when you acquire additional resources and deepen your corruption... Your demon has more control and influence over human thought and behavior. Detail your new dogma and rituals with help from the GM. So this is like getting firmer control. Basically, as you go up in tiers, you get to make up new dogma. And actually, I'm going to make a note there that this is probably... Uh, okay. Something like that. We'll figure it out later. Okay. So take a look at the special abilities for your demon and choose one. If you can't decide one to pick, go with the first one on the list. It's placed there as a good default choice. Get more special abilities. That's all fair. Uh, choosing a special ability is a chance to focus the game down to a specific range of possibilities. So what... How many special abilities does your average... I guess this doesn't show... This doesn't show any, does it? Yeah, it totally doesn't. Okay, let me look at actual, look at actual blades. Okay, so for example, uh, Bravos. Let's just here. We'll do smugglers. We'll look at smugglers. So smugglers start with how many? One, two, three, four, five, six options. Okay, so we'll make up. We'll make up some. We'll make up some options for 
for these dudes. All right, Demon of Riches. So some examples of special abilities are like smuggler rigging. So things that boost you as a group, uh, camouflage to conceal your vessels, elite rovers, right? Uh, all of your cohorts uh, get plus one. Um, barge adds mobility to your lair, which we, you know, we're already mobile. Um, steady for your for your guys and then vehicle. Okay, so I want something that like, let's make it just a brief, like a brief list of things we think a demon could do. We don't have to do each one, but like, um, okay, so additional additional mo money wherever you go. Um, let's see, uh, bribery, heat reduction from the narc. Um, something about like additional downtime like luxury, right? Uh, something about vice. Stress reduction, right? Because this is a demon of, what do we say? Uh, finery and high luxury. Yeah. Mm. Something about gear. You have more, you can carry more options or flexibility. Uh, finery and impressiveness, right? Access to like better g shit, right? Something about like you, you're always dressed better and, and more impressive. Uh, your instruments are the best. Yeah, like if you serve a demon of riches, your life is going to be slick and right? it's going to be sweet. Yeah. Um, okay. And then your team is going to be, your team is going to be better. Yeah. Okay. And then upgrades. Oh no, those are, those are, uh, okay. What I was looking at is upgrades. Special abilities for the smugglers are like part of the family. You create vehicles as a cohort, uh, during downtime, perform an activity to acquire an asset, right? Okay. So you guys can do stuff for you. Ghost passage. Just passing through, take minus one heat, leverage, uh, reavers, and renegades. Okay, cool. So that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So add to stats related to riches. Yeah, they're kind of glam. They can be kind of glam metal, totally. Yeah. Okay. Add stats related to riches. Uh, okay, good. And then... Um, and then the upgrades are an asset that allows an upgrade that helps in some way, like a cursed bong or a gang. Um, you get two additional upgrades. So you'll have a total of four. You can choose from specific upgrades or the general upgrades on the demon sheet. And then you do the the tribute thing. So let's change this. So one, repay their kindness. Spend one tribute to, let's see. They like you, get plus one status with them at your option. Spend one tribute to honor them. And take, and I'm going to change faction. One demon helped you to honor it. And take plus one status with it instead. And then um, one faction was screwed over. One demon was screwed over and you got an upgrade. It doesn't like you. You get minus two status with it at your options and one tribute to mollify it and take minus one status instead. Okay, there we go. Um, cool, 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 cool. Um, what, uh, what else do I need? Then we got to do contacts for this demon. No, and I think this list, this is just the walkthrough. There should be, yeah, demon upgrade, create a gang, using a cohort, and then um, the sp special ability. So let's add that at the bottom here. So demon uh, 
There we go. Okay. Cool. All right. So you choose your special ability, you assign your upgrades, the GM will pick you. So we don't need to make this list now. This is just telling you what to do. Take a look at a list of your potential contacts. Did I make a list there? Okay, let me add that in. Okay. So Demon of Riches contacts. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, no, so demons in this take the kind of like, it's somewhere between the ancient Greek idea of the, the daemon uh, and um, and the kind of 90s black metal Satanism version of demons where like there's no such thing as angels, but demons are real somehow and that like God is fake, but uh, but Satan is real. Yeah, it's it's not. The, the, the theology of this don't go looking for any kind of like, sense you you will not find it okay uh all right so choose a favorite contact uh one demon is also and one demon i'm just basically like changing out some of the words I'll tell you about two demons that are impacted by your choice i should actually here let me do a quick find and replace because I want um, demon and then demons replaced with all caps. There you go. Okay, good. Uh, all right, so anyway, where were we? Um, demon is also friendly. One demon is unfriendly at your option. These demons are even more concerned with this contact, so you gain plus two and minus two instead. Got it. Okay. Uh, Demon of Riches contacts. So the examples for the smugglers are a dock worker, a drug dealer, an arms dealer, a spirit trafficker, an anarchist, and a tavern owner. And there are, what, six? Let's do six of them. So what would what would a demon... Who would a demon of riches know? Uh, how about a powerful banker? Uh... A famous, right? Like, yeah, uh, a local, a minor emperor. R ruler of a minor empire. These are people that you can, you can know. Um, uh, a corrupt... Narc captain. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of a like, it's not a, like a mob bot. Like these people maybe are like too. They're too like big. Dock worker, drug dealer, arms dealer. Like, these should be about the same. Eh, but the other ones are quite good, too. Ruler of a minor empire, Krupnar captain, a powerful banker, uh, a taste maker, right? A taste maker, a celebrity. Like, not the celebrity themselves, but someone who chooses what is what is celebrity. Yeah, like, exactly, an influencer. You got it. Um... And then, let's see. You're a demon of riches. You want to make a shit ton of money. You want art. You want finery and luxury. You want to know people with connections. Let's see. Let's 
so you know like a supplier let's see one two three four five uh, let's see um There you go. I like that. Yeah. Powerful banker, ruler of a minor empire, Krupnar captain, tastemaker, supplier of drugs, and a snitch in another demon's service. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So, uh, demon upgrades. So, this would be like... Uh... And I'll come back to this. Okay. So, a cohort is a gang or expert who works for your demon. I'm changing cohorts. I feel like I should change cohorts to roadies. <laughs> like a groupie because they're not quite you you're a you're a true servant of the demon i think i should change it to groupies like you're not a band but like you, these are your yeah these are your groupies they're not part of the they're not part of the real like organization okay let me look for an example of cohort replace with groupie bloop all right yeah, I think groupies is probably the good call. I think followers is good too. Yeah, that's maybe more I think groupie might be too like band focused. Yeah, I'm gonna change it to I'm gonna change it to um follower. It's a little more generic, but it's also more generic on purpose. It's yeah, it's good. I like that. Okay. Groupie become follower there we go yeah i like that better yeah you can groupies groupies roadies and supplicants are all again it's not don't don't lean so hard into like metal is not a band right metal is like this isn't a game about playing a band it's metal as an aesthetic it's metal as a theme so don't don't think too much about the like it's right. It's a way of life. Exactly. It's a way of life, man. <laughs> it's a, it's an aesthetic. It's a, a theme and a feeling not like, yeah, it's not, it's not that don't be that specific. So follower, uh, let me double check groupies here. Uh, make sure I've cut, cut them all. Just followers. Yeah, we got it. Okay, good. There was just that one exemption. Um, it could be a game about being a band. You could totally, if you chose, music as your corruption i think that's on the list somewhere uh if you chose music or entertainment as your corruption you could totally be a space traveling heavy metal band but this would not be that this game by default isn't that thing uh okay all right so uh choose your contact example a demon of riches upgraded follower is a gang uh or an expert who works for your demon uh followers are Let's pluralize this. Followers are a gang, are gangs, or experts who work for uh, your demon. To recruit a new follower, spend two upgrades and create them using the process below. So, uh, I mean, this is the same. It's kind of the same as everything, right? You create, create, a, choose a gang type. Okay. Or experts, I guess. Yeah, gangs or experts. Work for your demon. Okay. Just need a gang from the list below. Um, so how does this work? Here we go. Yeah, types of gangs. And these are the same for every... These are the same for everyone... Uh, Okay, and I'll just adjust these. Okay, so in the Demon of Riches, we've got creating a gang. So we'll we'll go to choose a gang type from the list below. It has scale and quality. All right, so we're just going to make types. This is where we'd have roadies and groupies, right? Technicians, that sort of thing. Uh, okay. So in our in our game, we have uh, 
Let's see, Adepts, Rooks, Rovers, Skulks, and Thugs. But for us, we have Cultists, um, Technicians, like Roadies. I'm kind of turned off using that word because it feels too much like a band. So let's be generic. Technicians. Um, thugs, I think. Goons is better than Thugs. I like Goons better. Um... Cultists, technicians, goons, something about like not scholars, esotericists, right? <laughs> like um, occultists, but we have cultists. Um, hmm. Maybe cultists and, and occultists are the same. Uh, no, a thrug is a kind of species, I think. I think a thrug is a, it's like a ape lizard. Um, Okay, so cultists are uh, like um, scholars, visionaries, and uh, drug addled uh, prophets. <laughs> I'm going to put that in sarcastic quotation marks. Uh, technicians are uh, priests, uh, engineers. And experts, technical experts. Um, killers. It's killers, brawlers, and rass, rass about. So like, that's just kind of the same thing, right? The goons are like um, thugs, killers, and... Uh, Something about like it's your metal militia. It's your army of like metal goons. Meatheads. There we go. <laughs> right? Headbangers. Thrashers. Yeah. Uh okay. And a couple more here. Uh Something about like you, you can have like uh nobles, right? Sneaky dudes. This is the rook, the equivalent of rooks. Um cultists, technicians, goons, what do we call them? Faces, agents. Let's call them agents. Uh so these are spies, nobles, and uh They're not socialites really, but these are the people that in, in infiltrators. Yeah, because that kind of puts skulks and rooks together. Um, so let's hear. Let's go spies, infiltrators, and assassins. And then something about, yeah. Nobles, uh, con artists, and socialites. There you go, and we we mix in we mix and match it up a little bit. I like that. Uh, okay, so this is a type. Uh, I like that these are gangs. You can have a gang of nobles. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, okay, so cultists. I don't like scholars. I'm gonna change that to something else because scholars is too nice. These are like arcanists. Visionaries we have. So something visionaries and drug addled prophets. Like these guys are, they're like, they're just like weirdos. Weirdos that know things. Ooh, obsessives. That's good. Obsessive visionaries and drug addled prophets. Okay, all right. Let's put these in alphabetical order because it's bothering me. And I'm going to change this to slime <laughs> because that sounds better. This is my gang of slime. They're nobles. They're noble slime. Uh, okay. A gang has scale and quality equal to your current demon tier. Equal to your current, your demon's current tier. It increases in scale and quality when the demon moves up in tier. Slime is plural. Slimes? Like... Multiple slime, 
I, I don't know. Anyway, I like it better as slime. Agents, cultists, goons, slime, and technicians. Look at you. You're all slime. Yeah, it's a collective now. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if your team in a demon is tier zero, your gang is quality zero on scale. Zero, one or two people when your demon is tier two. Okay, good. They will add the elite feature, which is in plus one die. So if you're tier one and have a gang of elite goons, they would roll two dice when trying to kill a target. There you go. Perfect. I like it. Nice. All right. Creating an expert. Record the expert's type. So what's the example for expert? Is it a different, are there different lists? Oh, just their type. It's not a gang type. They might be a doctor, an investigator, an occultist, an assassin, a spy. Okay, yeah, it's just a job. Okay. Um, so they might be a star wizard, a barbarian warrior, an assassin. There might be a star wizard, a barbarian, a dealer. Drug dealer or navigatrix, for example. If you do not have a navigatrix among the PCs, you must choose this upgrade and it must be a navigatrix. Okay. So you have to. If you don't have one, you got you gotta pick one. You have to have an expert. Uh okay. Uh, an expert has a quality equal to your current demon tier plus one. Their scale is always zero. Uh your experts increase in quality when demon moves up in tier. Um Give them a name. I guess we're here. Work with work with the GM to detail these members of your crew. Giving them a name, an effect, and a personality. All right, edges and flaws. When you create a follower, give them one or two edges and an equal number of flaws. Now the edges and flaws are all the same in uh, in Blade. So these are things that would just always be true. So let's just write these. Let's write these down and figure out what the hell they are. Okay. So in Blades, your edges are can't you just hire a navigatrix? No. You have to have one on your ship. You got to buy one if you aren't one. <laughs> Principled is a flaw. Yeah, it really is. Uh, straight edge is going to be a flaw. Uh, uh, this follower... There you go. <laughs> this follower does not partake of the sacred herbs, nor any other divine unguent, powder, or fluid. Uh, okay. So, uh, what are their flaws? Uh, I like Savage. The cohort is excessively violent and cruel. Um, unreliable is pretty good. I don't think wild. Wild is a given. Like, you just, we want that. We want everyone to be drunken, debauched, and loudmouthed. That's very metal. Yeah, straight edge, not an edge. It's a flaw. <laughs> um, so, okay. Savage and unreliable, I think, probably makes sense. Uh, but they're not always available. I don't know. Unreliable, I don't, I'm not that interested in that. I kind of want them around. So, excessively violent and cruel. Um... No, I mean, braggadocious is great. Yeah, poser. Fucking poser is perfect. Um, This, and I should change this, the follower. Fucking good, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. 
Okay. Um, straight edge, savage, poser, and mm, like disloyal, maybe, or like they're they're not. Um, yeah. I want them to be... Oh, like a... I don't want... The opposer is a little disloyal already. They have a tendency to squeal when when stepped on, right? Oh, fake... Yeah, something like fake friends. Something like that. Yeah. So, like, they're... They're, um... Self-serving. Because you gotta, like... You're, you're here for the demon, right? We all serve the demon. I like that. Yeah. Uh, when let's see the follower cannot be trusted to put the needs of the demon above their own that's a weakness i like that okay uh all right and then edges um i like i like how we had a uh, wild how did how is wild phrase here? I want to just copy it and make it make it a good thing. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, let's just do that. Like just word for word copy it. The court is drunken, debauched, and loudmouthed. It's great. <laughs> we love that shit. Uh okay. Uh loyal. Court cannot be bribed or turned against you. Um I want one that they're basically like. They're like a good bud, like supportive. <laughs> uh, and I got to change cohort. So the follower, like a true bro, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want like a, like the attitude I'm looking for I want it to be less like gendered because like I know lots of women who are totally a bro in this context. Right. I, I know people like they're just, they're, they're there to like back you up when you need them. Uh, this is kind of the opposite of, or part of like self-serving where they don't respect the demon. They, they like care about the crew as people. Yeah, it's not, I don't know. It's not quite loyal. It's about, like, you. I care about you, bro. Like, you know, the demon is cool and stuff, but, like, yeah. It's like like friendly or yeah like I don't I don't, all of these are so yeah I don't know here I'll just put a I'll put a note <laughs> okay, I'll figure it out. I'll figure something out. Uh, okay, and then as individuals. And they'll go out of the way to engage with the crew as individuals. And I think that's absolutely an edge. Um, 
And then, uh, we need one more edge. Drunken, debauched, loudmouthed, cannot be bribed or turned against you. Go to and engage with you as an individual. Uh, something like skilled, right? Like, the follower is a professional. Um, trained or talented at what they do. Like, they're particularly, like, They've got skills, like trained skills. Uh, okay, so when you send a follower to achieve a goal, roll their quality, see how it goes, or a PC can oversee the maneuver by leading a group action. If you're hiring an expert, isn't that already a given? No, it's like you can be an expert with no skills. I think that's totally possible. Like you can know a bunch of stuff without doing it. I'm going to, whatever, don't worry about it. We'll, we got to play test this stuff. I don't need to like agonize over this, these little details. I think these are fine. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with them for now. Uh, okay, when you send a follower to achieve a goal, you roll their quality. You can oversee them if you direct the follower with orders. Roll command, which is not command. Command is uh, talk. Falls under talk now. If you participate in the action alongside the follower, roll the appropriate action. The quality of any opposition relative to the follower's quality affects the position effect of the action. Okay, I'm not gonna, because the example in this is, I, whatever, I'll put an example in later. Okay, uh, follower harm and healing. Uh, followers suffer harm with the PCs, it can suffer four levels, weakened, impaired, broken, and dead. Seems fine to me. All of your followers heal during downtime. Circumstances are amenable for recovery. Each follower removes a level of harm. If a PC spends an activity helping them. If followers destroyed, it may be your place. Spend tribute equal to your tier plus two to restore it. Plus two activities, recruit gang members, or hire a new expert. Okay. So what I need is special abilities and upgrades for riches particularly uh so let's look at the upgrades so the upgrades is about for for uh smugglers for example or cult or whatever uh let's take a look at the cultist one because people were asking me to look at that um Cult rigging, you get two free load of document or implement items. Okay, so that's like that that's the you get to carry more shit. Okay. So we'll call this one uh Bounty of Riches. You get two free free load of items of debauchery, right? Like Finery, uh, art. What what do we call an object with no purpose? But like, I need a term for for this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Objet de fuck. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Oh, worth of objects of excess. That's good. Bongs, dildos, finery, etc. I swear to God, if I can manage to get this book printed with the word dildos in it at least once, I will have succeeded. Uh, yeah, so you get free two free load worth of objects of excess. Uh, bongs, dildos, finery, etc. And that's it. Okay. Um, what else we got? Uh, something in your layer or on your ship. So this is a thing. This is a thing on the ship. Um... So what would a vault, right? Like a a demon, uh, the demon of riches would have some kind of like vault, ship's vault. And that is, uh, counts as a workshop. Oh yeah, 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 these are good. Okay. Um, so a room within your demon ship. A uh, room within your demon counts as 
a what kind of workshop uh how do workshops work in this fucking game it gives you bonuses to certain stuff right uh it is for crafting a workshop crew upgrade let me see to craft something spend a downtime activity to make a tinker roll to determine the quality level of the item you produce okay so this is for counts as a workshop um let me see if there's like a specific types of workshop Workshops, 95. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, crew upgrades. There's like, are these generic up crew upgrades? Or is that specific to, oh, okay. So I need a set of like generic ones for for the the layer okay cool um so i think i need to go let me find assign demonic upgrades so generic upgrades i guess demon upgrades and then and then demon of riches upgrades okay so the upgrades in blades just as like again a starting point is like boathouse, carriage house. These are ship ones. So like uh, ship upgrade one, ship upgrade two. And again, the ship is more like a moving, the ship is more like a moving um, building than it is like a spaceship uh, in the way that we think of it. So ship upgrade one, ship upgrade two, uh, a follower. Um hiding or disguise upgrade uh mastery right your crew has access to master level training uh quality quarters secure layer training some of these i'm definitely going to just keep for the generic ones um yeah we'll get to claims and stuff later uh training vault and workshop okay all right so um let's see uh the boat is literally a boat right it gives you vehicles so let's let's call this one shuttles um i can make this into a bulleted list because i like them better Doot. all right Shuttlecraft, your demon can spawn <laughs> minor demonlings, minor imps. Yeah, there we go. That you and your crew, uh, I guess you have a boat. Your demon has spawned an imp uh, that you can use for short range travel. Um, uh, cool as well. Short range travel. Uh, the demon has within it a birthing chamber wherein the imp is stored when not in use. Uh, a second upgrade improves the imp with armor and greater cargo capacity. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, good. Uh, ship upgrade two. You have a carriage and goats. Okay, this is another form of of like land travel. Um, so uh, let's call this one like bikes. Essentially, like this is the the thing you drive around on on like land. This is land vehicles. So we have one shuttle that can carry everyone together. This would be like a fleet of of bikes, uh, essentially. So what do we want to call this swarm vehicle swarm? Uh, Cause I want you to be able to decide what your, your little like hot rods. Yeah. What they look like, whether they're hot rods or motorbikes or whatever. Uh, I'm going to call it vehicle swarm for now. 
your demon has gifted you with a handful of mighty steeds. Uh, demonic horse creatures, uh, motorcycles, ambulatory metal spiders, or whatever <laughs> fits your paradigm. Handful of mighty steeds. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can ride around on them and look like bunch of badasses uh, a second upgrade improves him with armor and speed okay there we go Okay, so a uh, follower. Um, this is the this is just straight up like a follower is a gang or single NPC, whatever. Okay, follower got that good. Okay, uh. So a hiding or disguise upgrade. So this is like uh, uh, your um, shadow veil, right? Your um, your ship can move unnoticed. So like a cloaking device, essentially. Uh, let's see, your demon has uh your demon is able to hide its presence from other demons from others yeah uh okay if it is discovered use two downtime and pay tribute to your tier to reactivate this upgrade. Good. Okay. So you got a cloaking device. Uh, it's it's both. You you are just you're hidden. It's a veil of darkness. Um, yeah. Let's call it. Let's call it something more evocative. Like um, cloak of darkness or some shit. But yeah, just you're hidden. Uh, mastery. I'm just gonna rip straight from the game. Because this is basically just like your demon blesses you with master level training. Okay, cool. Uh, and then quality is the same thing. It just improves all your shit. Because these are just like basic game mechanical upgrades. And then I got to figure out what all these, all these like types of implants, uh, implements are. Uh, one of them we decided was what, uh, excess. Right. Oh God, get out of here. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can improve the quality of, and then I'm going to just set a note for later. There we go. Okay. Um, quarters, I think like you always, you can always sleep. Can you always sleep on your ship? I mean, you must be able to, but space travel might be instantaneous. I'm going to call this tolerance. Um, your demon 
tolerates your worm-like wriggling within its flesh. You may stay on board as long as you like. Without this upgrade, your demon will actively seek to regurgitate you after a day or so. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like you you can't you can't like it, it just wants to barf you up. You're a weird parasite. Um ooh, I like that. Regurgitate or digest you after a day or so. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay. You're worm like, you're wriggling around in its body. It's hu it's human intolerant. Yeah. Uh okay. Uh and then uh I think cuz like space travel in this is instant. I don't I don't think it's like we're in hyperspace. It's just like the navigatrix opens her mind to the star sea, cuts a hole in space, you flip through it and you're done. Uh there's no there's no like oh, we're hanging out in space doing downtime in space. Unless you have tolerance, then you can like hang around on your ship. Um I'm going to make a note here, uh priest ability. Uh the priest should have an ability that gives them this benefit or boosts it in some way. Uh, they are treated as symbiotic, not parasitic by default. Some benefit to both of them, right? Symbiosis, something like that. Yeah. Um, and what's great here is that it's, it's a, it's a metaphor, right? Like the demon, you could play this in a ship that is like a big physical demon with like squishy interior walls and stuff. But also like all of this is true of a ship that's just metal. That's just made out of metal and, and like steel and fuel and like the same shit you would expect a spaceship to be, uh, made of. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So secure layer. Um, oh, so this this is just like um, anti boarding, like materials, right? Secure, internal security. Yeah, someone pointed out earlier that um, if we were playing uh, the heavy metal version of Swan Song, yeah, Pi would absolutely be a demon. Pi would be a demon of like, what do we say for the demons? Like, I think it's a curiosity or or secrets. Pi would be a demon of secrets. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Higgs would be scum. Um, Piani would be the navigatrix. Uh, Eric would have been a priest. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's totally like, it's just like the weird alternate heavy metal version of that show. <laughs> um, okay. So internal security. Uh, no, uh, I gotta come up with a better a better name for that. But basically, the idea is uh, the demon has antibodies, internal laser turrets, a hyper aggressive sound system, or whatever or whatever else. But it can defend itself from boarding or aid uh, aid the crew in defense. Uh, a second upgrade improves the defenses. They're louder, deadlier, louder and deadlier. Um, cool. All right. So you just roll tier. It's like a thing. Yeah. It might be demonic immune response. It might not. Yeah. Totally depends. Uh, okay, and then training is just straight from the training is straight from the thing. And since vault is an upgrade here, we want to change this into something else. Some kind of workshop, but we'll figure that out. Okay, uh, training. The text for that is: if you have it, you earn two XP when you train in a, your your given tracks. So this is pretty cool.
And what do we call ours? Oh, no, we still have insight, prowess, and resolve. Okay, perfect. It helps you advance more quickly. So this is the one you take first so that you can level up yourself. Okay, when you train insight during downtime, mark two XP on the insight track instead of just one. If you have playbook training, you mark two XP. Playbook on the XP track when you train. Okay. Yeah, and I think for the demon, that actually helps. So the vault normally uh, increases your capacity for... Uh, I'm going to call this ego instead of vault or maybe let's call it both ego vault um because it's your uh your demon has a secure self-image <laughs> right like uh increasing its capacity for uh tribute <laughs> like it just it can absorb uh it can absorb more tribute uh, to eight. Uh, a second upgrade. To 16. A separate part. Oh my god, that's so good. Uh, a separate part of the... Because normally the vault can be used as a holding cell. Uh, a separate part of the demon can be used to store souls ghosts or other personalities detached from their body <laughs> there you go it's an ego vault uh and then workshop i think we can just pretty much your oh, man i want to go to the star wizards workshop your demon contains a workshop Pointed with tools for uh, getting high, <laughs> basically. Um, let's see, tools for chemistry, music, uh, weapon, uh, like black smithing, like construction, tinkering. I guess we can call chemistry, music, tinkering, and just laying around being stoned. Um, you may accomplish long term projects with these assets. There you go. Cool. I like it. Oh my god, metal work. Yeah, right. But that's too specific. I want it to be engineering. I guess we'll call it like tinkering, like making stuff. Construction. That's the most basic form of that. And just laying around being stoned. Okay, uh, great. So the Demon of Riches specifically uh, upgrades. Uh, we have the Bounty of Riches. Uh, something about upgrading the Vault, maybe? Something about like when, when you gain tribute, you gain extra tribute. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's hear. Let's do what we've been doing so far. Let's do Bounty of Riches. Uh, let's go Vault Upgrade. Uh, elite... And these guys have elite beat agents. Elite slime. Uh, elite agents. Uh, and then... I like how, like, if you're a Bravo, everybody gets hardened. Uh, oh, this is all the trauma. This Everybody gets plus one to trauma box. Oh, these are all kind of the same. Oh, interesting. Okay. So the second one is the only one that's like sort of special. Right, okay. So this here, we'll call this one um, 
Yeah. Something about the vault. But the idea here is that, like, um, it's a workshop. Ironically, it's called vault. Let's call it something else. Um, business center. Uh, I want it to be, like, a place where you can go to, like... Like a gallery or something. But this doesn't have to be a physical place either. It can just be like a bonus to like a studio or an atrium. Yeah. I like studio. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then the last one is uh, debauched. And I'll have to check that I don't use this elsewhere. Uh, each PC gains plus one trauma box. This costs three upgrades to unlock. Oop. Not just one. This may bring, this is like you can bring, you can bring someone back. Uh, this can bring back PC with four trauma. back into play if you wish okay great <laughs> vestibule yeah okay so the studio um that's our workshop for well, rich is like you're not really creating anything you're selling i want this to be uh this i want this to be something that gives you because they're not really about making stuff. I want this to be about like contacts maybe, like increasing your tier for certain circumstances. Uh, and this doesn't have to be, this can be just like demonic, like influence in spheres of uh, a power, right? Like it doesn't have to be a place. Um, so this is like business influence or something, right? Like, Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, no, this is perfect. No, it's called the invisible. It's called invisible hand. Obviously, your demon grants you uh, uh, an effective plus one tier uh, when dealing with legitimate or legitimate seeming business. There you go. Cool. All right. And then you have your elite slime. Uh, all, all of your followers with the slime type get plus one D to quality rolls for slime related <laughs> actions. And then the same for agents okay i sell slime and slime accessories um great good okay so what uh what's left i need to do i need to do the demon of riches special ability and I need to do uh, claims, which comes before that. So let's put that here. Okay. Demon of Riches Clams. Okay. All right. Um, well, I blocked off two hours to do this, and we have reached the end of it. I've got to go and get ready for today's episode of Court of Swords. So that's going to be it for now, but I'm definitely going to come back and, and do more. Um, let, me look at my, let me look at my schedule real quick. Maybe I'll do some more tomorrow, actually, because I'm on, I'm, on I'm on a bit of a roll, and I'd love to finish this up. So let's do another, uh, let's do another two hours tomorrow. I'll throw it into the schedule. We'll do it like before Far Verona. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. So thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, thank you for your, your help. Uh, if you're excited about this if you're if you want to play test or you want to see it don't worry we'll have it available in some form you can start to play test soon uh thanks for coming and helping me out uh, i'm gonna go get ready for my game and i will see you later
Bye, friends.